I'm Mark O'Brien. I'm the president and CEO of DDB North America, and I'm here at Advertising Week with the ARF. So, good morning, everyone. Gail Fugit, CEO and president of the Advertising Research Foundation. We're here at day four of Ad Week, or as I referred to it a minute ago, day 400. <laughs> and uh, I'm here with Mark O'Brien, the uh, CEO of DDB, and I was like, DDB, the CEO? The, of, and you said, because I'm like, there seem to be many CEOs in these, yes. or, in these uh, organizations, especially as they've built, built together bigger and bigger Well, we get uh, big, so groups. for me, it's, it's the U.S. and Canada. All right, Yeah. North America. Correct. Right, fabulous. All right, so, you know, I want to just kind of get started with, um, you know, with a question. You have, um, look, you were a finance guy, right? So I was, You went yeah. from, like, math men to mad men, <laughs> right? And and our careers kind of parallel each other, but we just yeah. met, like, five minutes ago, uh -huh. right? I was at General Mills in 1994, and wow. you were putting together businesses, right? You were putting together yeah. Omnicom. Yeah, I was part of that. Yeah, um, which was actually... It, Truly visionary, you know, putting together businesses that would that would stitch agencies' uh, support and uh, infrastructure, but also solutions for clients right. um, way before your time. So I'm interested in your take as to how advertising works today. Well, I think we're we're at a real crossroads right now, where there's been a lot of convergence and there's a lot of overlap. I mean, certainly in the social media space, is that PR, is that advertising, uh, customer relationship management. I mean, everything is one to one today. So we're engaging with individuals through programmatic. Is that CRM or is that advertising? And I think I think we're really sorting the space out, and we're on the cusp of almost a, a new era in in advertising and marketing. Uh, one where we we eventually come up with a unified measurement standard so that oh really tell I me hope. how we're gonna do that that's my well, that's my sweet spot <laughs> well I, I really think uh, I think we need one the as an industry yes. yeah and and I think once once we solidify uh, or come together in terms of measurement I think people will be able to resume a spot or a space that they belong to and can own. And, uh, and I think it'll operate much more fluidly. But clients don't know where to spend their money yet. Advertising agencies don't exactly know where to tell them to spend their money. And so there's a lot of experimentation. And through experimentation comes knowledge. And through knowledge comes, uh, I think, clarity. Right. Um, so are you, how do you see that uh, measurement fitting into that? Well, I think we're going to see in the next... Like how are we going to define the terms of what is advertising, right? Yeah. I, I thought you were headed in a really a, a clever and interesting place in terms of um, the kind of, you know, the other coin terms are native advertising. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's going to lose its distinction, to be honest with you. I think advertising will come to stand for everything, and there'll be specialists within the realm of advertising. But there's going to need to be somebody to uh, coordinate and quarterback all of that, and that's probably the realm of the big agencies like a DDB. So can the one future. agency handle that, or, or or do you think that clients are still going to have to stitch together di different relationships? You know, where it, yeah. in, over the course of my career um, at General Mills, at certain points we were like, we have to get a digital agency, right? right it was right. kind of like well, like the big research companies didn't originally didn't know how to do internet research uh -huh. any better than we did so we had to find an internet research company and yeah. now you know it's all kind of all come together yeah. are you optimistic that it can come together with and kind of also taking into account all this business is up for review right now right well i think i think people are looking for an answer uh, yeah. to, to those types of questions i do think that the big agencies can help better coordinate help them better control the content, help them better uh, make determinations as to where they place their marketing uh, dollars. I don't think they can do it all, which is why I think there's always going to be room for the specialty agencies. But I think uh, the, the bigger agencies are going to take a bigger role in coordinating and working with clients because it's exhausting. It's taken too uh, much time. Right. And I don't think anyone's getting it right yet. Right. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, you're so... But you've, you've really set the example as a leader, you know, as someone that recognized, you know, in creating and envisioning a, an organization like Tribal and creating, you know, a digital, like we need a digital agency far before your time <laughs> yeah. um, and, and the time of the industry. Um, do you, like, where does that come from? Those are like really visionary skills and that, I, it seems to me that's what's needed today. Where, did, how, where does your inspiration for that come from? You know, it's a little, it's a little like Wayne Gretzky says about hockey. You, yeah. you go to where the puck is yeah. going, not to where the puck is. And I think, 
I think a lot of times we fool ourselves into thinking that we set the direction of the industry. The reality is, is our clients set the direction. So we have to look where our clients are going, uh, what are their needs that aren't being met today, and how do we fulfill those needs. So I know that clients are confused about how to spend their money, so I know they need an answer for that. So if I was going to go out and do something brand new today, I would start working on this common measurement solution. Yeah. And I think if the, if, if the agencies don't come up with that themselves, somebody else is going to come up with yes. it, and it'll spring a whole new industry yes. uh, that we'll be dealing with. I think, I think the media reviews are coming now because just like in, in the 90s uh, and in the 80s when we got paid on commission, there was an inherent conflict of interest in our recommendations. I think uh, clients are questioning whether media agencies are making the best recommendations for how they spend their money. Because there's so much earned and owned media today yeah. through social that doesn't really cost anything. Yeah. And are they spending enough time creating content and talking to their customers for those media? Those are answers that uh, I feel like we need to be in the business of giving our clients. Um, when you when you think about um, the consumer today, do you think that consumer needs are like we're doing research with digital? It, do digital natives process information differently than than like me, right? Right. And my generation, my kid, and my generation, right? Um, do you do you think that consumers' needs are going to be changing? Because if you think about leadership management, right? Um, and the needs of the clients, they fall off of the needs of their consumers and their yeah. ability to really get at the fingertips for what the needs are. Oh, no, you're exactly your, right. What's your point of view about that? Well, I think, I think that historically consumers have had to find products that mostly meet their needs and then interact with those products. I think consumers are going to have much more of an option to find a product that exactly meets their needs in the I future. Love that. And so uh, it's going to require a lot more varieties and customization or SKUs as we, we yeah, refer right. to it. But they don't have to be on shelves anymore. So there's places that they can be stored. If a consumer is buying from a warehouse off of Amazon, they can keep a lot more products, uh, so to speak, on shelf than any other retail outlet. Uh, so I think we're going to see more customization. I also think that consumers' demand for immediacy is going to continue to grow. So, you know, they don't want to spend a, a ton of time shopping for a car. You know, right now right. you can do all of your research online. Right. But, you know, we're still a little ways away from being able to click a button and have that car delivered to you yeah. uh, at a price that you've determined uh, through your research. I think we're going to get there very, very quickly. And so those types of having immediacy and having a customized product that meets their exact needs are things that are, we're already on the cusp of. That is such an interesting point because it, it's this odd combination of, um, of technology enabled, yeah. but then the expectation of personalization, right? That's right. That's right. And high, high expectation of personalization. Well, I think, I think you know, when you talk about the digital native generation, uh, they don't even think about it. They just expect it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we marvel uh, at it. I mean, wow. that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, but but it calls into play too this whole um, this whole you know measurement. We call it the measurement mandate. Yeah. This whole measurement mandate from the standpoint of um, look, interesting work done by Mesh. Uh, which is a consultancy in Delta Airlines that uh -huh. discovered that they couldn't just measure the touch points of television, print, radio, TV. They had needed to measure the experience on the plane. Oh yeah, for right? sure. Of which is like so, it's so obvious. Yeah. But um, that's a whole different version of measurement. Well, Bill, Bill Burnback said the quickest way to kill a product is to do great advertising for a lousy product. So yeah, right? you really uh, have to be careful today. And I think that's why brands are gonna play such an important role because if you can get things customized, if you can get them immediately, you're going to want to do it from a trusted source and one uh, that relates to, to your personal beliefs and needs. So, you know, brands are, are talking more about relevancy and talking more about what they stand for today than ever before. And that'll grow increasingly important as we get to this immediate uh, purchasing society and this highly customized society. Yes, yeah. I think chasing after the customer's expectations is going to be it, it's going to be an interesting yeah. an interesting challenge. Yeah. So you're from New York. Did you did you start? How did you take your finance background and get into advert? How did you pick and choose? Uh, you know, like the next generation asks, like, how do I know when to hold them and when to fold them? Like, yeah. like just tell me. Look, I, I, I would always tease my people at General Mills. You guys want like the belt notch, buck, you know, of, of a career. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go, I'm, and then all of a sudden, ta-da! I'm successful, right? And it just doesn't seem like it works that way. No, how there's did no you way to plan it. That? 
I, I started out, you know, to me, uh, being in finance was an enabler because it enabled me to learn a lot about businesses from the numbers. And so I could take the details and understand how companies make money. And uh, then I just really gravitated towards creative people because uh, I'm not super creative in, in a traditional this. way. So you found people that are different than you. Of course. A lot of people don't do that. A lot yeah. of people hang out only with people that are like them, right? And you know what I noticed is you don't have to be the best finance person in the world to impress creative people. <laughs> so There's uh, an insight. <laughs> so I was being judged by people that thought anybody with financial skills was awesome. <laughs> You're yeah. like, oh, I guess I am great. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> I love that. We were just talking about Keith Reinhardt, who was honored last night. Yeah, right? lifetime that's achievement from the Clio. Yes. We're really super proud of yeah, him. Yeah, I think that's just so great. And uh, Keith is clearly someone that I interviewed at Can last summer and uh -huh. a friend of the ARF for years and years and years. And um, certainly an important counterpart um, at General Mills kind of, kind of way back. Like, well, you know, Keith Reinhardt was one of the early advocates of a pay for, for performance model. And uh, so DDB's been, been pushing that for a long time. And, and in my role, I was responsible many times for helping to implement that. So we, we work together with our clients to find out uh, what their KPIs are, to make sure that we can measure ourselves against it, and uh, come up with unique solutions that make sense. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Mark O'Brien, it's been so great Thank to you, yeah. meet you and spend time with you. You're an amazing it. leader. Your organization is doing breathtakingly important, fun, interesting things and and I, I love your thank you so much for sharing kind of the arc of your career because sure. I know it will be really inspirational to the next generation. Oh, that's nice. Thank you very thank much. You. I enjoyed it.